My talk has a title. Not everyone did that. Some people are more casual than I am. Um, but it's about finding things in stuff. Uh, and I thought when PA said, you know, what are you going to call your talk? I went, oh, shit, what's a clever name with a colon in it? And actually, this is my clever name. Uh, so it is all about just getting stuff, uh, getting things from stuff. So uh, I know many of you, and I've been introduced to many of you. Um, but if you don't know me still, you might know this person, and then you might know that person. Um, so uh, I think I'm trailing Rod just closely with like post red hearts and all that sort of shit. Um, anyway, that's my name. Uh, I'm a PhD student here. This is my final year. Um, I'm generally, without going into too much detail, into machine listening, content aware processes, um, and using that in my compositional practice. Uh, so what am I going to talk about? I want to look at some works that I've been composing, um, which exist as a collection of, of works, not just a single work. Um, I want to look at the Flucoma tools and how they've been used. Um, I want to get sort of hands-on with the code um, and the max, and then look at the compositions in progress uh, in whatever state they are. Uh, the main applications uh, of, of what Flucoma does for me right now is is about organizing and, and sieving or sifting through large sort of audio databases. Um, so kind of what the second toolbox is um, going to do, I, I assume, um, but kind of harnessing what's there already and making it work for me to do these things. Um, so a lot of slicing, um, a lot of the MFCC object, um, and then in incorporating uh, a number of the tools with Python in order to do batch processing and to make things faster than if you had to do it in Max. Um, uh, as well, yeah, using some of the other tools like NMF, HPSS to think about extracting things that are already existing in the audio that I want to get at. Um, great. So I think the best way to, to talk about these pieces or uh, this, this work as a whole is to tell a story about how it all started. Um, and I want to look at this, this character, uh, libllvmamdgpudesk.a. Um, and he exists here. So now you're wondering, OK, why did you show that to me? Um, and I'll give you some context. I was recently, for whatever reason, I th probably the internet's fault, was interested in taking all the data from my hard drive and turning it into audio. That's not an entirely new concept. Tons of people have done that before me. Um, but often the kind of practice is to like take one file at a time and do something like in Audacity. Um, and then you get one file. And, and that was way too slow for me. Um, so I ended up wrapping up. Um, some stuff in Python where I can say, hey, can you turn my home folder into another folder, but everything you see, please make it a sound. So if we make a gigabyte of audio now, shouldn't take too long. Have you done this in Soundforge? You could do the same thing. You could open up like Photoshop as an, as an audio. Yeah, th this is my it's thinking was just forcing files to be other files. Yeah, so OK, we've, we've got um, a gigabyte here. So if I go in here, uh, I have all my sounds. So let's find some chunky ones that actually probably have something in it. Um. Uh, some up. So uh, this was my process immediately just testing out this thing. Like, can I get as much shit as possible and then deal with the problem of, of magnitude later? Um, and that, that's, that works for me because as a composer, I'm paralyzed by the concept of like thinking about where the hell do I start? Um, so a reductive kind of way of working um, really works for me. Uh, and this generates a ton of material. 
some of it good, or maybe less, less of it good, a lot of it bad, but something to sift through and find other things in. Um, so that's the story of live, I love it. Anyway, um, so what did I want to find in all of this audio? Um, and in fact, I'll do the official thing and put it like that. Um, new, so I, I had in my kind of manual process a couple of samples that I found, which I was like, yeah, these are awesome. I really like these. Um, can I find other samples that are like this? Um, can I find connections or, or sort of make sort of abstract connections, computerly connections between samples? Um, or then furthermore create groupings of these samples that are both sort of immediate and perceptual, so creating hom homo homogenous groups, things that are similar, but also maybe having the computer find groupings that I might not think about. So, you know, I'm thinking about, it's very easy as a human to think, oh, these sounds are similar, yes or no, and, and qualifying that process, but maybe getting back a cluster which, oh, all these sounds have a, a sort of vibe to them, something a little less tangible. Um, and yeah, to use the, the computer to focus and, and hone in on what I was already thinking and to perhaps develop it a little bit. As well, um, like I said before, I, I'm paralysed at the start of composing something, so generating a problem to deal with is very fruitful for me. Um, so yeah, these are the kinds of things that I've just said. Um, can I find groupings? Um, can I capitalise on some known things in a data set? Um, yeah, so actually the first thing I did was to slice all these samples up because as you heard in, oops, as you heard in the, that's not what I want, as you heard in here, there's quite distinct musical segments in, within this. Um, there's of course the whole broad musical segment which is the sound file itself, but then there's these kind of other time scales like this, which are one musical segment that I perhaps want to use or find connections to, um, or group. And so I thought, well, I know about these guys at the same university who have all these tools that do slicing and analysis, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use these. Um, and so this is the, the spectrogram of that audio file. And um, as you would have heard, there's not really like any concept of an onset in that audio. Well, there's not a strong concept at least. Um, and initially uh, experimenting with that audio, um, it was kind of weak to even use something like more FFT based, like the buff onset slice with different, um, what are they called? Uh, metrics. metrics, yeah. Um, and so I started making these plots using the Librosa library in Python, which is quite nice, um, but they, you know, they, have, they even have this, this uh, part of the library which is made for generating recurrence plots called like segment.recurrence matrix, but then they don't tell you how to segment with it. So it's like, great, I have this plot and actually I think this correlates quite well to the segments of audio that I'm interested, um, but how the hell do I get from here to like sound files that I can actually play with? Uh, and so you can go right there and you can see some sage wisdom, um, which was right in front of my face, but I didn't know it. So Owen said, go on, try Novelty Slice. It's basically exactly what you're looking at. Um, and we've already done it for you and you don't have to code anything. And I went, great. So let's have a look at that. Um, so this is my patch. Let's just put this over here. Drop him in. So here are my, oh, I have to do the audio and stuff, don't I? So I've already got a slice that immediately extracts this long pitch section. Um, anyway, I'm kind of going a bit quick here because I have limited time, but the point is this novelty slice was amazing for thinking about musical segmentation rather than um, one, one shot kind of, I guess, percussive oriented. Um, onset based segmentation. So I use this to, to chop up this initial data set here. This is the uh, sorry, audio set or corpus, which is I think 7,000 files, uh, to chop that into 21,000. So each file has its own segment 
um, identifier. So if we sort by name, you can see here, you know, you've got the same file with eight different segments. And that's just a basic script um, in Python that wraps up the, the Flucoma command line stuff. Um, but it's quite nice because it's so bare bones, I can say, I can do things like, um, for every file, spawn a new process on a new core of my computer. So instead of waiting for Max to do its loop, um, uh, working through like a call of file names or something, I can actually say, here are a job of, uh, a pool of workers, go and process them as quick as possible, and when you're done, come back and get some more work. Uh, so I can demonstrate that, if that's interesting. I have to remember what it's called. Yeah, so if I do um, slice explode, it's like I've already prepared. Um, so this is slicing a, a gigabyte of audio. Um, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, but the point was like, at, throughout this whole process, I was doing things in Max and waiting, and I wasn't thinking about anything else. I was just kind of waiting and actually patching things to try and make it quicker. So I wrote these scripts once. So there you go, 30 seconds to do a gig of audio. Um, and then what I should have on, in the folder that I said it would go to, oops, is a bunch of segments. Um, great, so now I've only made the problem worse by giving myself more problems. Um, I have 20,000 samples at this point. I also have uh, a lot of things like this. Actually, going to go around here. Like at least 2,000 of them in some form, and some of them actually just complete duplicates. And musically, I was not super interested in that sound. I know someone probably in this room is interested in that, but I'm not interested in it. And I wanted to find more things like our good friend over here. Um, so furthermore, like how, how do I deal with this? How do I now make the problem worse and then kind of try and zoom back in and find these things that initially motivated me to put myself through this anyway? Um, and so I, I, I often reach for the things that you were talking about earlier, PA, like um, centroid loudness, maybe like the confidence as a sort of dirty noise descriptor, um, and then using Alex's entry matcher object to query a sort of two or three dimensional space quite easily. And I'd done this a couple of times in other projects and it, it was okay, but I felt myself falling back into like quite familiar patterns of working, like all the interesting stuff is at the edges of the space. It's at the high, the high centroid, um, low amplitude or high amplitude, low, you know, like the, the real edges and in the middle there's kind of just shit. Um, and that's my own taste projecting onto that process. But that, you know, I have to deal with that, obviously. Um, and so I was looking at new techniques and then the fluid corpus map thing was in my brain. And I thought, I'm gonna try and put a bunch of data through a sausage machine and have the computer pick out things for me and make a, a small flat space for me that I can navigate um, all of these audio samples. So again, more, more flucoma business comes in. Um, the buff MFCC object computes for me 13 coefficients per frame. I then take the buff stats um, and get the stats, the aggregate stats of all the frames, and then the first three derivatives of that. So I get 273 values per segment of audio. Um, and so that blows up quite quickly when you have 21,000 segments with 273 points. Um, so in, in Maxland, that looks a bit like... Yeah, so if I just drop this guy in, just to keep it max relevant. You have all that data and then you flatten it out into one long list. So it's completely arbitrary. I just take two and then shove it on the end of one. I take three and shove it on the, on the end of one, four, one, and you just keep going. Um, and the point was to make a one dimensional vector for each file with a bunch of data that I have no idea what it means basically. Or at least I kind of know what it means. But anyway, in the first place, it's MFCCs, so I don't really have any appreciation for what it actually says. Um, and then, what do I do with this data? Of course, I put it through a neural network, because um, that's what everyone does. 
and I wanted to say, hey, here's some of the bad stuff that I found, here's the good stuff I found, give me more of each, um, or more, G give me the good stuff and let me know the bad stuff so I can ignore it. Uh, and that, that looks like, uh, let me just get it up. This looks like a patch um, somewhere. So if I read in, um, sorry, I can't work like this. Oh yeah, here, here we go. Um, so yeah, using um, some, again, some Python on that data produced through the Flucoma objects, I basically get back a I hope this doesn't break. Yep. I get a massive file that has um, two different keys, and in the pair, you just have all of the files that belong to that identifier. So what I said was, um, zero is bad, one's all the good stuff. Um, and what you get, oh, come on. It's just terrible. All right, okay. Um, and then I don't want to blow everyone's head off. Oh, sorry, this is the buffered version. I need the non-buffered. I didn't make one. Okay, anyway, uh, you're going to have to trust me on that one. It's kind of tangential anyway, I just wanted to show it. Um, what ended up happening, the classification is actually quite good, but I lost something in that process, and it was that found out noise is quite cool, but only when you don't have it all the time. Um, <laughs> and actually, when you, when you inject something um, novel with the noise, it's an interesting composition and, and sonic, there's a sonic richness to it. As well, I lost known good samples to the classification process. So I was like, I know this one's out there, let's see what happened to it. Oh, it's bad. What happened to all the other potential good ones that I knew were in that set? Um, have I lost them as well? Where are they? And so this was like too much of a black or white approach for me. Um, and what I actually wanted was just n not a classifier, but a better appreciation of a known uh, of a corpus. Um, and so I then looked at ways of reducing all this data that um, I had, and to let the machine kind of say, "Hey, these are the two most important things about that data." Um, so I could talk about all the other types of dimensionality reduction there are, but that's not the point of the talk. I ended up going for um, this quite new algorithm called UMAP, or Uniform Manifold Approximation and Projection, um, to take 273 points down to two. Um, what's nice about this algorithm is, allegedly, it maintains the global and local properties of your space um, and respects non-linear non things inside of that space. Um, better than something like PCA. Um, so, you know, you might actually, after reducing all of this data down to two points, you, you might have something that feels like a smooth space that you can navigate around, as well as those kind of smaller parts of the space feel like they mean something, rather than just an arbitrary organisation. Um, and so I can show you what, uh, some like plots of what that looked like. Um, under dimensional reduction and outputs. So I ran um, a lot of different parameters to figure out what I liked. So this is one here. Um, this is one here. So using different parameters to kind of pull a pull. To me, this is my intuitive understanding: is you're like pulling the space in like taffy in different directions. Um, and I was thinking about, well, oh, that's not ideal. Um, what do, what do I actually want? And, and it's definitely not that, because that is so compressed. Actually, I want a quite even space, so that I have the maximal difference where there is difference, but things that are really close together should be respected, um, at least visually. And actually, uh, if this is 7-1, which in fact it is, um, which means some parameter that I chose, th this is the one that I went with, because it's quite easy to see here we've got a group that means something. Is that no. left? 
before 20 or before? <sighs> okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, and then anyway, I'll jump to the next step. I then went about classifying it uh, into different clusters. And what you get is the same mappings, but I'm using different hierarchical groupings um, to get the different number of clusters. So in this one, I ask, hey, can you give me 25 clusters on that, on that set? Um, in this one, could you give me 250? Going up and up and up, so the granularity changes, and I get a kind of spectrum of different levels of clustering. Uh, I'm going to just see where I intended to go and where I'm actually going to go. Great, so um, a lot of you have talked to about the Lua stuff that I did with the tools, so wrapping them up so that you can use them inside Reaper. Um, and I spent a bit of time in Max going, oh, like, how can I organize these samples? How can I play with them? How can I put them together? How can I structure them? And it, it led me to think, um, make some kind of weird connection that Lua can call the command line, command line can call Flacoma, Flacoma and, and Reaper, there we go. So um, I won't show the tools too much, you can come and ask me and I can show them to you. Um, but this is the start of a composition um, that took a specific cluster um, and then I'm just using that cluster to compose with a very small subset of the larger core.